I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. Today I'm going to be walking you through painting a black and white portrait in oil paint. As usual, I'm using a Fredericks Blue Label canvas. I prefer these canvases because they are a polyflax cotton blend that are triple prime for an ultra smooth surface, perfect for portraits and other fine detail work. Like all Fredericks canvases, they are extremely archival, which is important when you want your painting to last a lifetime. I have new painting and drawing videos once a week, so make sure you subscribe and follow me on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with my newest work. I started by painting the canvas with gray acrylic paint. I then sketch out my figure with a white charcoal pencil. Next, for the actual painting, I first lay in the background. I'm letting my brush strokes show at this stage. After I get the white laid in, I'll use a mop brush to soften everything up. Now I'm using a smaller brush to sketch in the trees and loosely painting the hint of leaves. Moving on to our face, I start by blocking in the lights and darks. Details are not terribly important at this part, but paying attention to where the light hits her face is. Notice there are no sharp or heavy lines. You don't want the nose, for example, outlined. Everything in the face should be very soft. Brush strokes showing at this point are not a big deal. We're going to use the mop brush to blend those out after everything is blocked in. Once blended with the mop brush, I'm adding more highlights with thicker white paint. By thicker, I mean less mixing medium, liquid in my case. The area under her nose will have sharper shadows than the bridge of her nose. Also note that the eyebrows are very lightly painted in. You don't want to make people look like clowns by adding thick, thick lines for the eyebrows. Stick with a hint of shadows. You can go back and define them more later as needed. When you get to the lips, you need to be careful not to make your outline too harsh. Given that my subject is wearing lipstick, I can make hers more defined than you would with somebody without. Try to keep most everything soft at this point, no heavy lines. Also note that the upper lip is darker than the bottom lip. This is because of how the light falls on the mouth with the bottom lip catching more light. For my first layer of her eyes, I start by blocking in the general shapes and shadows, just like I did on the rest of her face. The main difference is that now I have more defined lines. Being that the subject is wearing makeup, I can add darker paint around her eyes, defining them more than how you would on a male subject. At this point, I'm also building up a bit more on the definition around her eyes and eyebrows, using a smaller mop brush for softening these areas out. Being that the entire painting is still wet, I'll stick with a soft mop brush for my blending. Next, I loosely block in a lighter gray for her veil. Then I start blocking in the highlights of her hair. When painting hair, you want to think more in terms of clumps than individual strands. When you look at someone, you don't generally notice those individual strands. Lots of strands tend to look very stringy. I'm going to skip ahead now and block in her neck and shoulders. This is done just like how her face was blocked in, loosely then blended with a mop brush while still wet. Back to our hair, again think in terms of clumps. Once my general shadows and highlights are blocked in, I'll lightly soften these up with a mop brush. Later I'll come back in and define the hair more with a few more thinner strands. But for now, I'm keeping it very soft. For the pearls, I just add a medium shade of gray for my first layer. 
Now we're on to day two. The previous day's paint has dried. I'm starting off with a liner brush and working into the details of her eyes. While she is wearing makeup, it is fairly soft, so I don't want her eyes to be outlined with heavy lines, but soft shadows still. When I need to soften the line that I've made with the liner brush, I use another small clean brush to smudge, it, smudge the lines just a bit. When you get to the eyelashes, be very careful. You don't want your painting to look like she got in the fight with a mascara bottle. Eyelashes, like hair, should be thought of more in terms of shadows and clumps. I will line in a few single strands, but very, very few. Most of the lines I make for eyelashes will be softened with either another clean brush or by blotting it with my finger. Another thing to watch for while working in the eyes is the shadow under the upper lid. It's subtle in this case, but the shadow is there. These shadows are important in keeping her eyes from looking flat. When it's time to put the shine in her eyes, I start with a medium gray, then add a thicker, more opaque white paint inside of that. I use my finger to blot or smudge this line so that it's not too perfectly shaped. I also add a highlight at the bottom of her iris. Next, I'm back to building up more shadows and highlights around her face, focusing more around her eyes, and nose, and mouth where I did not do much work before. Where you put these shadows and highlights is extremely important in making her face look three-dimensional. Because my previous layers of paint are on her skin are dry, I'm using a more stiff brush to blend out the paint instead of the mop brush. The mop brush is great for wet into wet, where the stiffer brush is better for wet into dry blending. The underside of her nose is now even more defined. Be careful not to just put big black blobs for the nostrils, but shadows like everywhere else. Working on her mouth again, I'm adding highlights to her lips. I'm working here just like I did on her eyes with a liner brush and another clean brush for smudging those lines. For her earrings and necklace, I start with highlights with white and then add some shadows with darker gray, still using a liner brush. Back to her hair now, the previous layer is dried. I'm better defining the clumps of shadows and highlights that I started before. I'm adding thinner clumps now, still not individual stringy hairs, just thinner clumps. To finish up her veil, I'm just painting white back over the gray, keeping my paint fairly thin with the exception of where the veil folds. There, I use more opaque white paint. A few more details on the pearls, and I'm finished. I added a translucent layer of turquoise in my background. To do this, I used a piece of masking tape to keep the line clean. For the paint, I mostly used mixing medium, liquid in my case, and very little actual paint. That completes this portrait brought to you by La Cree Fine Art and Frederick's Canvases.